Consider the following proposed solution for the critical section problem. There are n processes p0 to pn-1. In the code, function pmax returns an integer not smaller than any of its arguments. For all i, ti is initialized to 0. Now, the code for pi is given here. They are asking which of the following is true about the above solution. And four options are given here. So, let's take a look at the code for pi. It says this is the do while loop here. Inside the do while loop, it says c of i equal to 1, t of i equal to p max of t0, t1, etc. up to tn minus 1 plus 1, c of i equal to 0. For every j not equal to i in 0 to n minus 1, while c of j, this is a while loop that will stop here, while t of j not equal to 0 and t of j less than or equal to t of i, again another while loop. Then after this critical section, then ti is initialized to 0 after that remainder section. So this is the code for the critical section given here. Here there are n processes p0 to pn minus 1 and they are asking which of these four options is true. Now let's go through these options one by one and see which all we can eliminate. First we look at option D. It cannot cause a deadlock. Now initially let us say we have two processes p0 and p1. Now t of 0 and t of 1 will be initialized to 0 initially. Okay. Now let us say p0 and p1 both wants to run simultaneously. So both starts. Let's look at p0 now. p0 will assign c0 equal to 1. Okay. t0 equal to p max of t0, t1, etc. up to tn minus 1. So this p max function they have only said that it returns an integer not smaller than any of its arguments. So let us say this p max function returns a maximum of t0 to tn minus 1. It's just saying p max returns an integer not smaller than any of its arguments. So we can choose any function that satisfies this condition. One of the function is that it will return the maximum of t0, t1, etc. to tn minus 1. So if it is returning maximum, p max will return 0 to n minus. All of these are 0 initially. So p max will return 0 plus 1. So ti will be 1. Now we are going to assign ti equal to 1 but let us say before this assignment happens p1 also calls p max and assigns it to t1. See that can happen without any issues. The, we don't have any critical section for running this part. So these two parts can run simultaneously. So p1 will also run p max at the same time. It will at that time t0 up to tn minus will also be all zeros. So this will return 0. 0 plus 1 will be 1 and t1 also will be 1. So p0 and p1 both calls p max simultaneously. p max will return 0 to both p0 and p1. So t0 and t1 both becomes 1 after execution. Okay. Now for every j not in 0 to n minus 1 while c of j it will be stuck here but c of j will be 0 for both p0 and p1 because of this condition here. Now look at the second condition while t of j not equal to 0 and t of j less than or equal to t of i. So for p0 the condition here checks p1 not equal to 0 that is true because p1 is 1 I mean t1 is 1 and t1 less than or equal to t0 that's also true 1 is less than or equal to 1. So p1 will be p0 will be stuck similarly for p1 also it will look t0 is not equal to 0 that is true and t0 less than or equal to t1 that's also true 1 is less than or equal to 1 which means both p0 and p1 will be stuck here now that is clearly a deadlock none of them can proceed further so it can cause a deadlock deadlocks are possible here so this is false option d is false now look at option c progress condition is satisfied now if there can be deadlock then definitely there can't be progress so option c also is false if progress is satisfied it will mean that deadlock will never occur so option c and d we have eliminated now there is only options b and a now, now let's take a look at option a at most one process can be in the critical section at any time so suppose we have the a few process p0 p1 p2 etc now we have already seen the deadlock condition now let us say deadlock is not occurring here so 
let t value be assigned like this for p0 let the t value be 1 for p1 let it be 2 for p2 let it be 3 etc so if processor assign values like this you will see that in this loop a process i can enter the critical section only when there is no other processes having a t value less than or equal to the t value of the current i let us call this t value as timestamp which means that a process i can enter the critical section only when there is no other process having a non zero timestamp as well as having a timestamp less than or equal to the current timestamp so here we saw that if two processes have the same timestamp then it will cause a deadlock in that case no, no one can enter the critical section but if all the process are having unique timestamps like this 1 2 3 etc then in this at this point even p2 tries to enter it will see that p1 has a timestamp 1 that is less than or equal to 3 so p3 p2 can't enter similarly p1 also can't enter because there is another process 1 having timestamp less than or equal to 2 so in this point only p1 can enter and after p1 enters it will make its timestamp equal to 0 after this from these two process p2 can't enter because again it will see that there is a non zero timestamp 2 which is less than or equal to 3 so p2 can't enter the critical section at this point but p1 can enter because there is only one other non zero timestamp that is 3 which is greater than 2 so after this only p1 can enter once p1 enters this will also be 0 and after that p3 can enter so this after p3 run this will also be 0 similarly if there are all the process have unique timestamps then only one of the process having the lowest timestamp will enter if none of if some process had same timestamp which can occur as i showed earlier in that case it will cause a deadlock only so two can't simultaneously enter so saying that option a at most one process can be in the critical section at any time is correct now option b bounded weight condition is satisfied we'll explain that also here so if processes had unique timestamps let us say at some point a process p is assigned some timestamp value of 5 if that's the case until this process completes before this process completes execution whatever other process come will have a timestamp greater than or equal to greater than 5 only so after one process arrived there one newer processes arriving can't go into the critical section i'll repeat again suppose one process p arrives and gets some timestamp whatever process arrive after p let us say some process q arriving after p will have a timestamp greater than or equal to 5 only a timestamp greater than or equal to 5 only like 6 7 etc some greater value so a process q which arrives after p can't enter before p so in that case bounded weight is satisfied if you interpret it that way but clearly you can see that there is a timestamp as well in some there is a deadlock as well so in some implementation a bounded weight would mean finite waiting time but if there is a deadlock occurring finite waiting time condition is not satisfied so we can't say that bounded weight condition is satisfied that also we can't say that's what is also is false so a is clearly the right answer here